welcome back or welcome if you are new. Uh, my name is Amy and today we are just going to be working on doing some freezer meals. It's so nice to, if you're having a busy day, just to get a freezer meal out of the freezer, put it in the oven, and in no time it's done. And I wish I would do this a little bit more often because it is so nice um, to have these on hand. But we're going to do a few today. So I hope you enjoy these recipes and hopefully maybe it'll get you motivated to do some freezer meals for yourself if that's something that you would like to have on hand. So let's get right on into making some freezer meals. And also if this is something that you enjoy, I would love it if you would subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that you will be notified every time I upload a video. So we're just going to start off with browning some ground beef. The first recipe that we're going to make is called potato haystack casserole. And so we need to brown some ground beef for that. And this is always what I use for my ground beef when I'm brown, browning it. Um, it just works really good. This one is from Pampery Chef, but I know you can also get them from Walmart and from different places that I've seen. I don't know how those work, but I really like mine. It shreds up the meat really fine, and so yeah, it works really good. And so now we're just going to come over here and make like a sauce that goes in the casserole. Um, just some milk and some sour cream. I'm just going to stir that up really well to get the lumps out of there. And then we're just going to add in some taco seasoning and also some ranch dressing mix. And I actually didn't realize this till later, but I was supposed to add the taco seasoning to the meat, but it turned out this way, so I guess it's fine. So we're just going to stir that and get that all stirred up together. Then we're just going to keep stirring the meat until that's all browned. And I'm also going to add a little bit of onion in with the beef just to add a little bit of flavor. So I'm going to use my little cutter here for this. So we're just going to add that in, stir that in really well. And I also want to add in just some salt and some pepper just for some seasoning. Um, there's seasoning in the other sauce so I won't be adding anything more. So now we're just going to put these in foil pans that way they're just easy to get out and throw away. Um, first we're going to put down these hash browns. These work really nice for casseroles. I like to use them when I'm making these types of casseroles. So we're just going to put it on the potatoes first. And then we're going to put some of this sauce on the potatoes. And I'm going to keep some a little bit back to put on top of the meat then, beans. I was supposed to put some of this taco seasoning in the meat. So we're going to leave a little bit of that back for the meat. And so now we're just going to put the ground beef that we fried on top of the potatoes. And just kind of try to get it evened out because I'm making two of these pans. Just try to uh, get the same amount on each casserole. And then just put the rest of the sauce on top of the ground beef. So now we're going to make a cheese sauce and we're going to start by melting some butter and then adding some salt and wait till this is melted and then put in some flour and then add the milk. I usually just add it slowly. And then keep stirring. Um, milk is something that can burn very easily if it gets hot, so I just like to stand there and stir it um, until it's boiling, pretty much boiling. And then I'm going to add some cheese. And then I just usually add cheese until it's 
looks cheesy or yeah till it tastes cheesy enough and there is the finished cheese sauce that we're going to add on top of our casseroles to finish them off. This does look like a lot of cheese sauce on top of these casseroles, but I actually didn't add quite as much cheese as what the recipe said, so I figured it'd be okay. It wouldn't be too cheesy. And then for the lid, I'm just going to write what it is and how to finish preparing it. Like for this, after it's done baking, you're supposed to add some crushed nacho chips on top. So I'm just writing that down so I remember how to finish making it and now it's ready for the freezer. I do though, I like to put on some aluminum foil just to uh, put an extra protection on it because if it's in the freezer, I want it to stay good. So I'm gonna put foil on it first and then put the lid on. And you can also, if you have these pans, just write on the foil. If you don't have the lids, that works just as well. Just to write on the foil and that'll, that'll work. So now we are gonna move on to the meatloaf. I'm going to make a couple loaves of that. We're going to start by just beating up some eggs, just a little bit. And then we're going to pour that into the ground beef. And I just use this minced onion. You can also just uh, cut up some more onions like I did earlier. And then we're going to crush these crackers. Um, and the way I like to do it is just crush them a little bit in their packs that they come in and then put them in like a bag like this. Um, I would recommend a freezer bag but I didn't have one on hand so I just put it in this bag and then just used my rolling pin to roll them out and I don't want them really fine just crushed a little bit but yeah you can the more you roll it the more fine it will be so it's just however you like your crumbs to be. So, and then I'm just going to add in some of these crumbs. And then I have a little bit extra there, and I often use these for uh, when I make chicken and stuff, so I'll just put these away, and then I'll use them later. And then lastly, we're going to add in some melted butter that I'm, again, going to use this thing to stir the meat together try to get everything together and the meat was very soft so I'm gonna try put some wax paper in these containers and then freeze the loaves in these containers before I put them in the tinfoil pans um, just to keep them in a, a loaf shape I guess I haven't ever done it this way before but I think it should work So I'm making two loaves here. We're just going to do the exact same thing with the other loaf here. And now they're ready for the freezer. Alright, and now I got them out of the freezer. They look really good. Um, they didn't come out of the pans too bad. They came out fairly well. The only thing was the wax paper kind of wanted to stick in some of the crevices in the meat, but um, it wasn't too bad. It came off pretty good for the most part. I peeled off what I could and then I just used a knife to kind of dig in there and get the paper that was still kind of in a crevice um, so it came out really good and then I'm just gonna put some bacon on top I probably won't like smother it in bacon all the way around because I know it is a little bit harder to get your meat cooked that way sometimes but I'm just gonna put it on top here And then we're going to go on into making like the top sauce for on top of the meatloaf, which is uh, lots of ketchup, 
start off with. And then brown sugar. And then also just some seasonings, um, some garlic powder. And then just a dash of liquid smoke. And then we're going to stir that all together. And I'm going to have to use a whisk to get all the brown sugar stirred in really nicely. And so there we have our sauce for on top of meatloaf. So I'm just going to kind of divide this out again on the two meatloafs. Right, and our meatloaf is done. Now I'm just gonna put the lids on, and again, write on the lids what it is, how to bake it, and then they go in the freezer. So the last thing that I'm gonna make is some baked oatmeal, just for us here at home. Um, this isn't actually a freezer meal, but it's nice to have a pan of baked oatmeal here just for breakfast. Um, eggs, and then I'm adding some brown sugar. And then also I'm going to put in some melted butter and then we're going to beat that up really well to start off with. And then we're going to add in some baking powder, some salt and some milk. And then oatmeal. And then we're just gonna stir that up. And I almost forgot to add cinnamon like putting cinnamon in. I think this is probably optional, but I like the taste of cinnamon in my oatmeal. So we're just going to get this baked. And here it is all done. It's ready to go. And I usually, you can eat this warm. It's really good warm with milk and fruit on top. But um, if I make it ahead of time, we'll just eat it like cereal. And maybe put some frozen fruit on top or um, however you like it really. And if you don't like milk, you can just eat it like this, too. But I like to put milk on mine. It's really nice to have it around for a quick breakfast. All right, y'all. So that is going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed these meals that I made. And hopefully it gave you some inspiration or got your imagination rolling to different meals that maybe you could make for your family, things that y'all enjoy. So thanks again for watching, and I hope you all have a good day. We'll see you next time. Bye.